This is amazing. Amazing. I want to thank you all. This is incredible. This, uh, who knew? I knew it was going to be good. Who knew? And you know, outside we have thousands of people trying to get in. Should we let them in or not? No. <laughs> Wow, this is incredible. Thank you all very much. We are going to take our country back. We've lost our country. We're going to take it back. We've lost it. I'll tell you what, what's going on is incredible. You know, the Iran deal, I don't know if you've been seeing what's going on with Iran. They violated the agreement already. I mean, it is a few days after all. They violated one of the worst deals I've ever seen negotiated at any level. I'm not talking about country I'm talking about at any level, they violated the deal. We should be putting on sanctions. Can you imagine that? And they're embarrassed to put on the sanctions because how do you put on sanctions so soon? So it's just, it's very, very sad. I mean, what's going on with our country, the incompetence of our leadership is beyond belief. Beyond belief. So sad, but you know what? We're going to make America great again. It's going to go quickly. It's going to go quickly. Remember this. I'm pretty good at signals, and I see a lot of things happening. One thing I see out there just happened today. In Tehran, they're burning down the Saudi embassy. You see that. Now, what that is, is Iran wants to take over Saudi Arabia. They always have. They want the oil, okay? They've always wanted that. You watch. I predicted a lot of things, you have to say, including get the oil, take the oil, keep the oil, right? I've been saying that for three years, and everybody said, oh, I can't do that. I mean, this is a sovereign country. There is no country. They have a bunch of dishonest people. They've created ISIS. Hillary Clinton created ISIS with Obama. Created with Obama. But I love predicting, because, you know, ultimately, you need somebody with vision. Now, I am the most militaristic person in this room, other than maybe a couple of these guys. A couple of these guys look pretty out there, I'll tell you. But I am the most in this, in this whole room, and there's thousands. I guess you set, you set an all-time record. Can you believe it? Man. And this is not the youngest place, right? I mean, this place has a little bit of age on it. This is your all-time record. And I guess what they're doing with the overflow is they're putting them over at the convention center. So uh, that's amazing. That's, I really am honored by it. And you know, everywhere I go, though, there's such love in these rooms and these arenas and these stadiums that we go to. It's love. It's love. You know, I tell people and I tell friends of mine, they say, how do you speak in front of all these people? No teleprompters, right? No teleprompters, right? We've had enough of the teleprompter guy. We don't want any teleprompters. And no speeches that we read and everybody falls asleep, right? No speeches. You need a good memory for this stuff. But, you know, a friend of mine is a very, very successful guy. He said before another speech I made with 25,000 people, and he said, Don, could you do me a favor? Could you send me a copy of your speech? I said, there is no such thing. Whatever it is, it is. It's common sense. It's business ability. It's whatever it is, it is. It's true. It's true. And he said, how do you do that? He has a little bit of a phobia for speaking. It's, you know, he's rich, he's tough, he's a brutal guy. In fact, I'll probably use him, maybe not for China, because he's not quite tough enough. But I'll use him for one of the countries that's ripping us off. And believe me, there are plenty of them. But he said to me, how do you do that? How do you do it? And I thought for a second, I said, you know, it's funny. And we're all in the same group. You go to Mobile, Alabama, we had 35,000 people, right? Oh, look at that. By the way, the football team, in all fairness, did not look too bad the other night. We have to admit. <laughs> right? But you go to Mobile, 35,000. Oklahoma, over 20,000. 
in Dallas, we had, we filled up the Mavericks arena, totally packed, no matter where we go. And I said, there's love in these rooms. It's like love. It's like a love fest. People are so tired of incompetence. They're so tired of stupidity. They're so tired. And, you know, it's really amazing. So I saw, I was watching a commentator before today, and they said, Trump draws by far the largest crowd. So I like that. And then they, he said, he's plain spoken. Now, you have to understand, I went to an Ivy League school. I went to the Wharton School of Finance, the number one school. I mean, it's like impossible. It's great. My uncle was a professor at MIT. And he's saying plain spoken. Now, I didn't know if that was a little bit of a wise guy or what. I can't understand it. And by the way, our audience is young and old. It's really, really smart. We have the smartest people. We have the smartest people. We sort of have everything. We probably have a few that aren't so smart, right? But we have, we have the smartest, we have the best, and we have people, and I'm telling you, no matter where I go, and this is why, and I told my friend, it's not hard, because it's, no matter where, we're all the same. You know, we, we all, everybody I see, they want to make America great again. That's what they want to do, no matter where. And it's been sort of an amazing period of time. So, you know, I, I always talk, and they always say, oh, it's terrible, my opponents. Can you imagine these guys? They got two in the poll, like Jeb Bush. He's got two. He said, I shouldn't be talking about the polls. If I were him, I would not talk about the polls. I would, I'd, I'd pretend they don't exist. But the opponents are always saying, he's always talking. But I love polls. Now, so far, I love them. Because I went out on June 16th. And almost right from the beginning, we've been right at the top. We've been right at the top. Every single time. And some new polls just came down. Just happened to have them, just quickly. CNN, you know, we're 36 to 16 to 14 to 12 to 4. And then you have Bush at $59 million spent. He's at 3. And interestingly, with uh, CNN, they did a second part of the poll. I get a kick out of these politicians. They give millions of dollars to pollsters. Okay, millions. And you know what? Every week, these guys hand me polls, the most incredible polls. It's like you can't read them, there's so much. I learn more about myself. I say, why do they spend so much money on pollsters? Now, I'm going to start spending quite a bit of money because I just want to be sure. I don't want to take any chances. I don't want to do it on the cheap. I don't want to do it on the cheap, right? He says, I don't want to do it on the cheap. But until now, I've loved it because I've spent less money than anybody else and have the best result, right? Now... That's what should happen with our country. Think of that. Think of it. Think of it. In education, as an example, we're number 28 on the list worldwide. So we're the 28th. That means 27 countries, including some literally, I mean countries, you wouldn't even believe they're countries. They're better than us. And yet, in terms of money spent per pupil, there's nobody even close. We're number one. So we spend far more, like far more, than anybody else, and yet we're number 28. By the way, we're getting rid of Common Core. I get elected Common Core. Common Core is gone, right? So... So I've always, I've always loved, you know, I start off because I see all these people, they spend money. Hillary has, a, you know, 70, 80 million dollars. I looked at her offices. They have these gorgeous offices. And, and you know who pays all this money? Special interests, lobbyists, donors, people that want things. I'm self-funding my campaign. I'm working for you folks. I'm working for you. Believe me. Believe me. I mean, every one of these people... And I like some of the Republican guys, and some I don't like, to be honest with you. But I like some of the Republicans, and some I have a great respect for. Some I say, how did they ever become a governor? How did they ever become a senator? I don't care. I really don't care. And I say it like it is. But I will tell you this. Some of the people that are running, 
you look at you look at what's going on, you look at the kind of money they've raised. People giving four million, five million dollars, two million, one million dollars, they have got these people a hundred percent. They're no longer working for you, they're working for their donors, they're working for the special interest, they're not working for you. You know, I was in Iowa recently in front of a great crowd of people, and I said, Look, my whole life I've made money. I've had an ability to make money. Oh, by the way, our budget. You saw what they did two weeks ago. Can you believe? That was like, and you know, it went so fast. So many different things. It went so fast. We're funding all of these people that they want to bring in from Syria. We're funding visa programs. No, think of it. Which, by the way, we have no idea who they are, where they came from, and they're young and they're strong, and there's a lot of men. And you look at this migration, and you say, maybe it really is the ultimate Trojan horse. Look at what's happening with Germany. Did you see yesterday? They want to close down Germany. They wanted to close down major cities in Germany. And she got time, person of the year. I didn't. Can you believe it? That's okay. I never expected it. I'm not a part of the establishment, so I never expected it. But she got it, and I think what she's done is absolutely atrocious. By the way, we all have a heart, and we want to see something good happen. And in Syria, you build a safe zone. You get some of the Gulf states that have so much money. I mean, the money they are making is so enormous, they're putting up nothing. They're not taking anybody, and they don't put up money. Hey, nobody said they were stupid, okay? We put up the money. We do everything. We do everything for everybody. And now they want to take in thousands and thousands of people that they have no idea where they come from. It's not going to happen. And if it does happen before, assuming I win, if I win, we're doing awfully well, and we do great against Hillary head for head. Believe me. Great. And just in case you have any question, all right, the last person that Hillary Clinton wants to run against is me. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. You know, I saw Meet the Press when I was talking to Chuck Todd, and somebody said, hello, folks, I love you too. Somebody said, the Clinton Payne said they most would like to run against Trump. So I called up, they, you know, they put in that they would most like to run against Donald Trump. So I said, Chuck, let me explain something. When they say that, that means they don't want to run against me. You do understand that. In other words, if they say they want to run against you, you're the one they don't. Believe me, and you see it even for the last few days, they do not want to run against me. They do not. And I'm going to win. Don't forget, it's very important, there are some structural advantages. The Democrats have certain structural advantages in terms of getting elected. And, you know, you look at the different states, and there are certain advantages that they have. You have to pick the right guy. I'm going to win. I'm going to win states that they never even thought about winning. We get crowds like this. We... We get crowds like this, and I'm telling you, I'm going to win. And, and, you know, I understand life. For instance, I said, remember when Jeb and Rubio both came out? And sort of an interesting story. But, again, it's a prediction. Hey, I wrote about Osama bin Laden in my book two years before the World Trade Center came down. I said, you better study him. You better watch him because I didn't like the way he was talking. You got to take him out. They didn't take him out. He knocked down the World Trade Center. I talked about the oil. I talked about a lot of things. You know, I'm... You, you want to get somebody that has a certain vision. I said, don't go into Iraq. Again, the most militaristic person. I'm going to build our military so strong, so powerful. We're never going to have to use it. We're never going to use it, probably. We're going to be so strong, so powerful, so sharp. We're never going to have to use it, hopefully. But I said, don't go in. And by the way, we're taking care of our vets who have been poorly taken care of. Poorly taken care of. But I said, I said all the time, don't go into Iraq. And if you look at 2003, 2004, they actually had some people come in from the White House to talk to me because I really, you know, I'm a real estate guy and I'm a businessman. 
I employ tens of thousands of people over the years, tens of thousands. I create jobs. I'll be the greatest jobs president that God ever sent to this planet, believe me. But that's what I do. But because of the fact that I seem to get a little bit of press, I was saying, don't go in, don't go in. And they tried to talk me out of it. I said, look, if you destabilize Iraq, if you obliterate their military, which is essentially what we did, Iran is going to take over Iraq and everything else. And that's exactly what happened. And I wrote about it and I talked about it. If you look at Reuters in 2003, 2004, articles about it. And, you know, again, I'm somebody that believes in the military, but you got to know when to use it. And we used it wrong. And then we backed people that are a disaster. I mean, they're a disaster. They wouldn't let certain people be inclusive to the government. And that's how ISIS happened. That's what happened. They couldn't come in. So now we have Iran taking over Iraq. As sure as you're standing, and in some cases sitting, you have Iran taking over Iraq. So think of this. And this is something came to my mind two weeks ago. They made this great deal. They get $150 billion, right? Can you believe that deal? We never even asked for our prisoners, right? We never even asked. They have the, the worst, the worst. One of the dumbest I've ever seen. And I said, it's one of the greatest deals I've ever seen. Then I thought, no. You know who made another better deal than that? Iran. Because they're going to take over Iraq. We gave them Iraq. Second largest oil reserves in the world. We gave it to them. We handed them. And how about our president saying, we're leaving Iraq on a certain date. So the enemy pulls back. No, think of it. I'm watching this a couple of years ago. I'm watching. And I said, did he actually say a certain date? Because now what happens, the enemy, they don't want to die, folks. Okay, believe me. You know, you hear about, oh, they want to die. They don't want to die. And they don't want their families to die. And by the way, their families know exactly what's happening. They know. Those wives know. Those wives know. They know exactly what's happening. We are weak and we are soft and we're pathetic. And what's going on has to be stopped. And it has to be talked about, but it has to be stopped. So you look at what's going on, and I say the Iran deal. So... They get $150 billion. They have the right to self-inspect. Think of that one. They get a self-inspect. And the other inspections take place over a 24. They have to wait 24 days. But the clock doesn't start ticking for a long time, right? For a long time. So the 24 days could be forever. By that time, they'll sweep up the floors. They'll paint them battleship gray. They'll say, oh, we, have, we weren't doing nuclear weapons here. By the way, I have to be honest. We gave them so much money, they really don't have to do too much more research. They can buy the damn things, okay? What we have done is so incredible. But then I said to myself, it's one of the great deals. And then we never got our prisoners back. And now Iran wants to start negotiating for the prisoners. We never even asked for the prisoners. And we should have said, before, first day, like three, four years ago, did you ever see a negotiation take so long? And we gave every point. We say, we want this and this. No. Oh, okay. We'll take it. Then we want this. It's very important. No. Oh, this is Secretary Kerry. Great nigga. He did not read the art of the deal, folks. So we want this. We want that. And we didn't say it that way. We said it this way. Uh, would it be possible for us to have anything? Could we get anything? Just anything. Please. No, you can't have anything. Oh, okay, we'll take it. This is... So, you know, it's funny, I was telling you. So I have Ivy League education, smart guy, good genes. I have a great genes and all that stuff, which I'm a believer in. But you know what? So it's, it's like so incredible. Because I go in and I see, and I see what's happening. And I see what's happening. And you predict, and they don't want to give you credit. Like, for instance, these cameras back here right now, they will never show this crowd. They'll never show this crowd. No, no, they're never going to show this crowd. They're never going to show it. Turn it. Turn it. Turn it. Spin it. Spin the camera. Spin the camera. Ah, uh, 
Look at the guy in the middle. Look at the guy in the middle. Why aren't you turning that camera? Why aren't you turning the camera? Terrible. It's so terrible. Look at him. He doesn't turn the camera. He doesn't turn the camera. It's a disgusting. I'll tell you, it's disgusting. The only time they turn the camera is if we have a heckler. I like hecklers because the only time these guys turn the cameras is, and then you see how many people are here. I tell you, I go home all the time. And my wife, she watches on television. It's always live. And they do get good ratings for these speeches. But she watches on television. She always says, like she'll say tonight, I'll get home. Like one o'clock in the morning. She'll say, darling, did you have many people there? I say, what? She'll say, they never take the camera off your face. They don't want to show the crowd. That's what it is. They don't want to show. They're really dishonest people. No, they are. No, look at the guy in the middle. Look at that guy. Turn the camera. Turn it. guys they don't turn it but if one person's over in the corner if one person's over there those cameras they make them into a pretzel I thought they couldn't turn them I thought mechanically they didn't turn they turn they turn put a guy over in the corner that's protesting and you'll see those cameras they'll be in 14 different positions it's so damn unfair the press terrible. It's terrible. I mean, that guy, that guy right there, who do you shoot for? That guy right there has not moved that camera. It's disgusting. All right. Enough. He, he won't move it. He's instructed by his bosses, do not move the camera. They'll fire him, I guess. I don't know. It's really, it's really terrible. So, so a couple of things have happened. Yeah, we ought to fire him. I'd fire his ass right now if I could. Sure. True. You know, you know, just to show you stupidity at this level, they don't realize that showing these crowds is good television. Okay, they don't really. I'm telling you, my wife said they never move from your face. Now, you know, I think I have an okay face. Or no. They never move from your face. They never, ever move from your face. And you see it with this character in the middle. And, and honestly, look at the people up. Look, every corner and then outside of the arena. They're not turning the camera. Do we have a protester available? It would actually be good television, but they want to marginalize all of us, so it's, it's really terrible. It's real, honestly, it's really terrible. Well, that's okay. Now look, so CNN did a poll, and CNN's not necessarily in love with Trump, that I can tell you from their coverage. I've never seen roundtables. They'll have like four people, every one of them's a Trump hater. I said, do you think I could have somebody that likes me? It's unbelievable. But, but. It's unbelievable. And you know what's happening? You are so smart because you people get it. I mean, why do I have 42% and 40%? If I would read my press, I don't, I would say maybe I should be at nothing. I should be like Bush and some of these guys. I should be at nothing. The people, I'll tell you what, one of the, the most pleasant things that's happened, number one, the turnouts. Number two, in all fairness, the kind of receptivity of the polls. They've been amazing. But number three, the people are really smart. They get it. The people really get it much better than I ever thought possible. They get it. They know how crooked this system is. They know these reporters are crooked people, many of them. They're crooked people. 
They know it. So anyway, so with CNN, they did a second part of the poll. So I'm at 36 percent to 16 to 14. Cruz is in second place. He's at 16. Carson's at 14. Rubio's at 12. Christie's at four. Bush is at three. Okay. Now, they had a second part of the poll. Who does best on the economy? That should be an easy one, right? Trump, Trump, Trump. Trump, 55%. When they did this poll, I think you had 15 people, 16 people. I'm at 55%. Who does best on the budget? Trump, 51%. But here's what I love, because it's changed a lot since Paris, since California. We had these people going, shooting everybody. Oh, it's the Second Amendment. It's, it's so great to me. Second Amendment. We're not changing Second Amendment. There's an assault on the Second Amendment. You know, Obama's going to do an executive order and really knock the hell out of it. You know that. You, no, you see it. They've announced it. So it'll go through the court system for years. Well, it should be overturned. Like, you know, so many of He can't get anybody to do what he wants them to do. You know, the system's supposed to be, you get the Democrats, you get the Republicans, you get, and you make deals, right? He can't do that. He can't do that. So he's going to sign another executive order having to do with the Second Amendment, having to do with guns. I will veto that. I will unsign that so fast, so fast. On illegal immigration, which is a big thing and became so big, you know, when I signed up, we will build the wall. He wants to build the wall. We will. We will build the wall. Uh, we will build the wall. And this will be a real wall. This will not be one of these jobbers, you know, a little wall. A little wall that costs like $2 billion, right? We'll build a real wall for a hell of a lot less money. We're going to build a wall. We're going to let people come into the country, but they're coming into the country legally. There's none of this crap that we've been going through. When I brought up illegal immigration on June 16th, when I announced, it was, oh, did I get, I, did I take punishment? I mean, Rush Limbaugh said he received more incoming than any human being I've ever seen. And then he doubled up because then I found out I was even more correct. And then you had the killing of Kate from San Francisco, this incredible person, and Jamil in Los Angeles. And, and you had another one in Los Angeles, a, a woman, 66-year-old veteran, was killed, sodomized, raped, and killed by an illegal immigrant, wasn't supposed, and many, many more. This is three examples, and many, many, many more. Bad for the economy, bad for so many things. They got to come in legally. They got to come in. We can't let these people take over our country. It's no good. It's no good. It's no good. And what's happened is they know how, I, and by the way, do you notice when I said the wall, when I said the wall, everyone said, oh, you can't build a wall. The hell you can't. It's easy. <laughs> and I always tell, so China, 2,000 years ago, China built a wall that's 13,000 miles long. This one's 2,000 miles long, and you really, really need 1,000 because you have a lot of natural barriers. So you need 1,000. So China can do something 2,000 years ago that's 13 times longer and bigger than what we want to do. But I'm going to make the Great Wall of China look not so good because we're going to have a wall that's going to be a real wall. It's going to be a real wall. So illegal immigration, Trump wins with 48%. And ISIS, Trump wins again with almost 50%. Foreign policy, I win. I win all this stuff. And I actually said, I win so much with these polls. Why aren't we just having the election tomorrow? Let's get it over, right? You know, it's crazy. And very importantly, with the debate, you know, these are the debate scores, and I wrote them down, and they do these online debates and the online scores. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people call in. Drudge is this incredible guy, 46% for Trump. Who won the debate, the last debate? Who won it? You know... I wouldn't mention Bush other than he's spending millions and millions of dollars on negative ads. No, listen to this. No, no, listen to this. And his ad is, 
You know, we killed him in the debate. He was down at 1%. He, was, he came in last. What happens? He gives me a question, makes a statement. And they said, oh, he was so brave. He made a statement. Oh, this is what we need. Low energy person, believe me. This is what we need. So he makes a statement, and I gave him the answer. I said, Jeb, I'm at 42%. You're at 2%. You started off next to me, and now you're down at the other end, and you're going to fall off the platform. Okay? It's true. It's true. And the problem is he does, you know, spending millions and millions, doesn't put my part of the answer in. He puts his statement, he cuts when I'm ready to give him hell. So I figure every once in a while I'll mention, although it's, he's not going anywhere, so I don't want to waste too much time. Now, okay, so listen to this. So Drudge, 46%. Time Magazine, 49 This is out of 15 people. In other words, I got 49% of the vote out of 15 people. Slate, 51%. Uh, U.S. News and World Report, 69%. Public Broadcasting System, PBS, 69% of the uh, vote. Washington Times, 62. CBS, 59. Fox, 62. I won the debate. Now I go back and I say, oh, I think I did really well. Then I go back and I watch these commentators. And they say, well, Trump didn't have a particularly great night tonight. You know, I can't say I really did badly because I did pretty well, right? They say, they're very dishonest and stupid. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to change things around. Somebody has to speak up. Somebody has to say it like it is, right? We have to say it like it is. Now, so all the other debates are the same thing. Those were the, those were the debating numbers. Morning consult in terms of the actual 40% for Trump, 9% for the second. ABC, Washington Post. These people do me, believe me, they don't like me. ABC, Washington Post. Trump, 38. Cruz, 15. Monmouth Ball, very respected. Trump, 41 to 14. CNN, now this is Iowa. Look at this. CNN, Iowa. Trump, 33. Cruz, 20. Nobody ever hears that. You don't hear that. Everybody says, I'm a little behind... I don't think I'm behind in Iowa. I think I got a really good chance of winning Iowa. I love the people of Iowa. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. So in the polls, we're doing fantastically well. And uh, again, believe me, if I came in second, I wouldn't be talking about it. If I came in like 14th, I definitely wouldn't be talking about it. But when you come in first, you discuss it. Now, when we look at what's happening, we need the right people. We don't have the right people people from the president on down he's putting in political hacks he's putting in donors he's putting in people that shouldn't be in position he's putting in people with conflicts of interest and hillary i mean look at hillary her husband was paid a fortune for speeches paid by people that were doing business with the state department and paid millions of dollars there was a big editorial today now think of it Think of it. Folks, that's our system. And nobody, look, I was a part of the system until six months ago. You know, I used to be, I shouldn't say this, but part of the establishment. Nobody knows the system better than I do. It's no good. We got to straighten out the country. We owe $19 trillion. We got to put the right people in place. We got to put the right people in place. We don't have it. Now, when Hillary Clinton runs, and she should be in jail, by the way, for what she did, just so you understand. No, she should be. She should be. You know, it's really sad. It's a sad, it's a corrupt system. Everybody knows she should be in jail. What she did with the emails is a disgrace. People that did 5% of what she did, their lives have been destroyed. Their lives have been ruined. Their lives have been ruined. You look at General Petraeus, nice guy, had some bad moments, right? Nice guy. What, what happened? They destroyed him. They've destroyed other people for doing far less than Hillary. I don't think they're going to do anything to her. That's my opinion. I don't think they're going to do anything. I think she's going to run. She's being protected. She's being protected 100%. And you know what? It's not right. You know, it's almost not right to all of the other people that have suffered so greatly. That's if you really want to know the truth. It's not right. 
But, but, so let's assume it's, you know, one way I'd rather run against her than anybody else I can think of, if you want to know the truth. But at the same time, it is not fair because she shouldn't be allowed to run and a lot of things should happen to her. But here's the story on Hillary. Hillary will go out and she'll go to Iowa and she'll make a speech and it'll be very guarded. You ever see, she doesn't come into like this. Everything's guarded, guarded. You know, they'll pick up people from a line. How are you? You know, what did Hillary have for breakfast? Okay, you can ask that question. And, and it's really, okay. But you ever notice she'll do one thing, it'll be very short, then back into the plane and she goes back and you don't see her anymore for like another week. And I say this, and I know it. We need somebody very smart. We need somebody very strong. Not just strong, you gotta be smart. Because we're being outsmarted and outfoxed by the entire world right now. The entire world. They are outsmarting us. And about Ivy League, I said, the problem with what I do, I use certain words because there are no better. When I say our leader, you know, person is back, you got to give him back. I can't believe they didn't walk from that negotiation a couple of times. They would have been able to make a deal. That would have been better. And I'm all for making a deal. It's got to be a good deal, though, not a bad deal, not a horrendous deal. So we didn't get anything. So we're going to make changes. And the reason this place is packed and the reason you have overflows all over the place outside and the reason a lot of people are going home unhappy today because they couldn't get into either one. The reason is, is because people want, not that phony Obama change. Remember, we want change. Oh, we got change, are you? People want strength. They want competence. And, and I'll tell you what. became big, big stars. I hope they're making a hell of a lot of money, but they're great. They're great. I just, I saw you out there. I just wanted to thank you. Yes. But you know what? We're going to make it great, right? We're going to make yes. it great. Oh, it's great. Go. It's going to be great again, you all. Yes, it yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And this time, we're going to have real change. Real change. Yes. And we're going to have something bright to look forward to. Yes. Diamond and Silk, you know, they were, uh, a friend of mine said, about a year ago, said, you have to see these two women on the internet. They were unbelievable, and they had millions of hits. And I was in North Carolina, I said, do me a favor, they have to come. And they came up, and they were great, and they've been so amazing and so loyal. And the fact that you came to Mississippi makes me feel very good. And you know, I have somebody else. Thank you, darling. Thank you. And I have another person who's working really hard. He's done a fantastic job. He's, he just redid Dural for me. And he worked with Ivanka and Don and my family. And we're doing a lot of great things. And, you know, right now, I don't care too much about this. You know, this is so much more important. Somebody said, well, what about the business? They can run it so easy. In fact, I don't want to do deals. I don't want to do it. I just want my deal. My deal is to make all great deals for our country. So if you think of this, no, no, if you think about this. With China, we have a trade deficit of $500 billion a year. Think of it. Japan has massive trade deficits. We, we take in millions of cars. You know, we give them like nothing. We give them nothing. It's got to change because we can't go on like this. You can't have countries where it's all Mexico is the new China. I love Mexico. I love the Mexican people. I'm going to win the Hispanic vote. In Nevada, I just won with the Hispanics in the last poll. 
because they understand I'm going to create jobs. We're taking the jobs back from China. We're taking jobs back from Vietnam is now opening. Everyone's open to strip us. And I believe strongly, I do. I want a free trade. I like free trade. But it's got to be smart trade. It's got to be like even. Okay? It's got to be even. It can't be where China does $505 billion in deficits with us. Okay? You can't have a trade deficit of $505 billion last year. You just can't do it. You can't go on as a country like that. We lose our jobs. We lose our base. We lose our factories. We lose our money. And we feel stupid on top of everything else. You can't do it. So one of my boys came, and he's a great guy, and he's done a great job. So Eric, come up here for a second. Come up. My six-foot-six boy. Say, just say something. Well, I love this man more than you can possibly imagine. And as a family, we are so proud of him. You know, we've been working together for 10 years, and it's amazing. He stepped into this race six months ago, and he's winning it. And we are going to win it. We are going to win this presidency, and we are going to turn this whole crazy thing around. And we are proud of him. You see, he's young. He doesn't comb his hair like I do a little front. See? I remember I used to comb my hair like Thank you very much. So... When I started, I talk about trade, I talk about China, I talk about the border, you know, I talk about we have to have strong borders. We have great border patrol, but they're told to stand down. I talk always about the Second Amendment. We're going to save the Second Amendment. There's a big assault on the Second Amendment. We're not, we're not, there's not going to be any assault on the Second Amendment. I will tell you that right now. There will be no assault. We are going to have a Second Amendment. You know, I tell people, you go to Paris or you go to California, you take a look at what's going on in the world. If the people of Paris or the people in California, where they actually held wedding parties for these two people that killed them, think of it. There's something going wrong here. But in Paris or in California, if you had a few people like you or you or you, honestly, no, seriously, this guy right here, prime time, right, with a badge. But honestly, if you had, you know, in, in France, it's, one, it's like no guns. You can't. It's the toughest like in the world, they say. And Paris is so tough, you can't have guns. But the bad guys can have guns, we can't, right? The bad guys. If they had four or five people that I just pointed out, and they had a gun taped into their ankle or put on their belt where we could do a little shooting in reverse, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been that way. It wouldn't have been that way. It wouldn't have been that way. And, you know, I mention it all the time. And I say it to people, and New York City is sort of a gun control heaven for so many people, but I, I negotiate, I, I talk to people, we debate the subject, and they lose almost immediately. I say, wouldn't it have been better if instead of losing 130 people in Paris, we had the right to fight back? You know what they did in Paris? Get over here, boom. Get over here, boom. Get over here. And you have a lot of people so badly hurt, they're going to have a lot more than the 130 deaths. But... But just, boom, nobody, they were total sitting ducks. How about our military base where we lost the five soldiers, one of whom was a world-class marksman, one of the best, and they had a gun-free zone on a military base, which I would end in the first hour of my presidency. A gun-free zone. And a maniac walks in and shoots these five soldiers who were really great soldiers. They were unprotected. And I say to these people, some of whom are, I mean, they're good people. It's the naivete, the, the stupidity, the naivete. I, I say to these people that I talk, wouldn't it be better? And we'll be like having this debate in front of 20 people, right? And they lose all the time. They can't win it. And then you call them up the next day, have you changed your mind? No. It's just crazy. We need protection. If the people in California, if the people in Paris, if so many more, if the soldiers were allowed to have their guns on the military base, it wouldn't have been that way. I mean, you might have lost a couple, but those guys would have been gone. They would have been dead. It would have been over with. It would have been over with. And I tell, I tell the newscasters all the time, this lowlife who was in charge, and you know, I call him the guy with the dirty hat, they're calling a mastermind. And then the next sentence, they say, they're using the Internet better than we. We invented the Internet, meaning this country. It came out of here. 
Silicon Valley, wherever, and reinvent. And yet they're using it so brilliantly. They're taking young, impressionable people, in some cases probably other people too, but they're taking young, impressionable people and they're getting them to fight for ISIS. And then they go over and they fight and we take them back. Where were they? They were fighting for ISIS. We take them back. No more coming back, folks. That's, hey, by the way, that's the, that's the least. That's going to be the least of their problems. That's going to be the least of their problems coming back. But there won't be any more coming back. Can you imagine? They go over there and then they show their passport. We take them back. It's not going to happen anymore. But when you think about when you think about guns, think about that. If people had guns, it's it's a terrible thing to say. People have guns. You're going to fight back. You're going to save lives. You're not losing lives. You're going to save lives. So we're going to protect the Second Amendment. Now, a few more things. So when the when we all started. I said, boy, that's so dishonorable, that's so sad. Because Rubio came in, nice guy, he sweats a lot, but he's a nice guy. I never saw a guy, never saw a guy sweat. But he is, he's a nice guy. And he supposedly was mentored by Jeb Bush. So everyone said he'll never run, he'll never run. But they're politicians, there's no loyalty with politicians. You know, all talk, no action. They're, I mean, honestly, oh, do I know these people well. And I said, you remember? I said, they hate each other. And I hated to see what they said because Jeb said he came in and he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have. And he came in and Jeb Bush said, they said, what do you think of him? He's my dear, dear friend. I think he's a wonderful man. He's, I said, he's lying. Then Rubio, what do you think of Jeb? He's my dear friend. He's my, and I said, he's lying. Now they're going at it and I feel so good. Okay. Okay. No, I love it. I love that kind of stuff. It's like Peyton Place. You know, this whole thing is like Peyton Place. But when I started, it was all about the things we discussed. And, and it's about, you know, keeping Ford in Michigan and keeping a Nabisco in Chicago. And, and, you know, those stories where Ford's building a $2.5 billion plant. They're taking our jobs. They're going to make cars, trucks, and parts. They're going to take those things and they're going to sell them right into our country. Probably have illegals drive them in, you know, because what the hell it costs, whatever. The legals will drive them right in from Mexico. And I said, that's not going to happen. And remember this, a politician will let it happen because Ford will hire lobbyists and special interests, but Ford will hire lobbyists who are very close to whoever it is because they're all taken care of. Ford will hire lobbyists and those lobbyists will go up to a president and say, you know what, these people help you out a lot. You cannot treat them this way. And you know what they'll fold? They'll come to me. Forget it, folks. They don't have a chance. They don't have a chance. So what happened is, and I tell that story, and I tell the Nabisco story, but you've all heard it. I don't want to tell it again, but Nabisco's moving in from Chicago. Their big plan. We're not going to, nobody's going to eat Oreos anymore. I'm sure as hell not going to. But Nabisco's moving its plant out, moving it into Mexico. And I don't blame Mexico, and I don't blame their leaders. Their leaders are too smart and too cunning for our leaders, okay? They're too smart. They're too cunning. They're taking our jobs. In Tennessee, a great place in Tennessee, there was a company, a very big foreign car company, was going to build in Tennessee. All of a sudden, at the last moment, they said, oh, no, I'm sorry, we're changing our mind. We're going to Mexico. They took it away like we're babies, like we're babies, okay? We get nothing. We get nothing. When that happens, we lose our jobs. We lose our fat. We get nothing. It's going to change. It's all going to change. We have to become a rich country again. We can't be great unless we're rich. We can't. We can't. A beautiful woman came up to me, and a sort of elderly woman. She came up. She said, Mr. Trump, I like you so much. I'm voting for you. But are you nice enough to be president? I said, I'm actually a nice person. But I go wild when I see what's going on with our country. She said, but you know what? You're right. She said, she said, but are you? And I said, honestly, this is not going to be, I think I'm a very nice person. I love people. I love everybody in this room. I really do. I want, I love everybody in this room. I love everybody. But, but I'll tell you what. I said, this is not going to be an election based on niceness. This is going to be an election based on competence. We need competence. Man. We have to stop. We have to stop. We have to stop.
We have to stop the craziness. So when I announced on June 16th, I had all those things. And now we have other problems. Now you have ISIS, and you have all of these things that have gotten out of control under the Obama administration. And we're going to knock the hell out of them, folks. We're going to end it. We're going to knock the hell out of them. Honestly, we're not going to take it anymore. We can't take it. And we don't want to go through 25 more years of this stuff. We've got to. We shouldn't have been there in the first place we were. We shouldn't have left the way we left. We did. We should have knocked out their economics, which is their oil, and we did. By the way, we should have knocked that out years ago, and they wouldn't exist right now. We should have knocked out their banking circuits. You know, they have, nobody knows more about banking than I do. They have circuits that are so complex, money is pouring into them. We got to knock it out. Nobody even talks about it. We're going to knock them out. We're going we're gonna to create, because we have to rebuild our country. We have to, our infrastructure is falling apart. Our roads are falling apart. Our highways, our bridges, our tunnels, our schools. We've, think of this. Think of this. We've invested, we've invested $2 trillion in Iraq. We're probably into the Middle East for $5 trillion. Hard to believe. Nobody even knows what that means, trillion. It wasn't even a word 10 years ago. We're in for $5 trillion. We got nothing. We have nothing. It's a mess. It's a mess. Whether it's Syria, whether it's Libya, we're backing people. We don't even know who they are. It's going to end, and it's going to end, and we're going to be really smart and really, really strong. We're going to put an end to it, and then we're going to come back to our country, and we're going to rebuild our country. We are going to rebuild it like never before. We're going to create jobs for our young people. We're going to create jobs for our young people. They're going to college. They're borrowed up to the hilt. They have no hope of getting a job. I hear more about that than anything. They go to a college, they do well, they work hard, they borrow money, they come out and they can't get a job because our jobs are all in different countries and overseas. We're gonna end it, we're gonna end it. We're gonna end it. We are going to change our tone we're going to be respected by the world. We're going to be listened to. We're going to be listened to. We're not listened to. We give billions and billions and billions of dollars away to countries. We protect other countries, and they do nothing for us. They don't even like us. You know that if we had a war, Japan doesn't have to help. If somebody attacks Japan, we have to immediately go for it. That's what the agreement says. So if Japan is attacked, we have to protect them. If we're attacked, they don't have to bother. What kind of deals are these? South Korea, I order thousands and thousands of television sets a year. They all come out of South Korea, except for Sony, and Sony lost its way. In all but they all do. Samsung, LG, they're all out of South Korea. They are a behemoth, a behemoth economically. So what happens? We protect them. We spend billions and billions. We got the maniac next door, who, by the way, does have nuclear weapons, probably can't fly yet, but, you know, eventually they'll be able to. But he does have, and nobody brings it up. That's like a subject they don't want to talk about. Some things you have to talk about. But we protect South Korea. We get nothing. We've got 28,000 soldiers. They are making, on the border, where I wouldn't want to be if I was a soldier, frankly. And we are protecting them they are an economic monster. They make a fortune. They rip us off on trade. And we get nothing. Now, we're going to get along great with them. Germany, we protect Germany. We give money to so many people, and nobody respects us. Nobody listens to us. Nobody wants to do anything because we have leadership that doesn't know how to play the trump card. It's really true. They don't know how to play the card. They don't know how. So, just in concluding, we're going to get rid of our... Look, this is the easiest, right? You know what I'm going to say. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to repeal it and replace it. You know, your rates, I don't know if you know, your rates have gone up 25, 35, 45 percent. 
It's going to die in the year 2017 anyway. It's dying. It's totally dying, which I predicted. Should have been killed, except that Justice Roberts in the Supreme Court allowed it to go on. But we're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to get something so good and so great. We're going to straighten out our borders. We're going to straighten out our military. We're going to take care of our vets. We are going to make our country better than ever before. We're bringing back our jobs. We're going to make something really special. And I want you to remember this night. I want you to remember this night. You've got to get out and vote. When it comes to your time, you know, you're not too late down in the circle. You've got to get out. And I say it to the people in Iowa. I say it to New Hampshire. I say it to South Carolina. I say it to Nevada. You got to get out and vote. We can't take a chance. I say this all the time. If you're having problems, if you're not feeling well, if you're having all sorts of difficulty, if your wife says she's leaving you, she doesn't love you anymore, I don't care. Get out and vote, right? You got to get out and vote. So, folks, I love you. This has been an amazing evening. This crowd is beyond. And I just want to tell you, we're going to work together. We are going to make our country truly, truly, truly great again, greater than ever before. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.